Hi, this is Keir from Shopify. In this presentation, we're going to focus on Liquid. If you're new to the Shopify platform, you might be wondering what exactly Liquid is. Well, in actual fact, it's the template language that is used to create Shopify themes. It has a lot of similarities to traditional web-centric programming languages such as PHP and Ruby. And in this presentation, we will have a look at the main features of it and how they relate to the Shopify platform. Let's begin by actually asking what is Liquid? Well, in its simplest form, it's a template language used in Shopify themes. I like to call it a language. Other people might call it a syntax or an engine. There's various terms. Uh, but to me, I, I think language is probably the most uh, applicable in as much as it has common uh, constructs that you'll be familiar with if you have uh, done any sort of programming, things such as if-then-else statements or logic or uh, filters and, and uh, loops and things like that. So if you've done... PHP or Ruby, as I said earlier, then you will probably be familiar with a lot of the concepts and find the syntax very, very easy to pick up. What Liquid actually does for us, it creates a bridge between our template files and a data store. Now, in our case, the data store is actually a Shopify store and it allows us to have um, uh, constructs within our files that uh, will then when compiled on the Shopify platform will be replaced with data from a particular store. And as such, this allows our themes to be agnostic and reusable, whether that's the whole theme or a chunk of code. Uh, as the templates themselves uh, and Liquid uh, in, in effect doesn't have any concept of the actual data that it's pulling in. For example, it doesn't need to know the name of your store. It doesn't need to know what products are in your store. All it needs to know is that if a product has been requested, it will uh, go off and grab that data relevant to the store that that particular theme uh, has been applied to. Uh, this also means that uh, when you come up with a really uh, functional piece of liquid code, you can use that over and over again uh, in all future projects. So let's have a quick look at how Liquid actually works. Uh, let's say that uh, someone is requesting the URL of your Shopify store. Uh, Shopify platform then needs to work out which store is being requested from that URL. And once it's done that, it will go off and uh, hunt out the actual theme. Now, it will hunt out the active theme directory. Obviously, if you have a Shopify store, uh, you can have multiple themes within that store, but you can only have one active one. So it will go and grab the particular uh, theme directory and then uh, also work out which template file is being requested. So for example, is it a collection page? Is it the home page? Is it a product page? Once it's done that, it will work through the um, template. It will uh, find out uh, if there are any liquid placeholders in there, whether they be output and logic, both of which we'll look at shortly. And it will go off and grab the data that's being requested um, for the particular store from the Shopify platform. Now what happens then is the liquid placeholders will be replaced with uh, HTML. So for example, if it's uh, the template's requesting that we input the name of the uh, the shop itself, then the placeholder will get stripped out and the actual name of the store will get input as HTML uh, in that sort of compiled template, which then gets sent to the browser. Finally, the browser processes the uh, HTML file that it's been sent and fetches all other required assets, such as images, JavaScript, CSS, etc. So pretty straightforward. Um, but uh, very, very powerful, and we'll look at some of the features now. So how do you identify a liquid file? Well, it'll come as no surprise that the extension is .liquid. Uh, as you can see here, I've just uh, output four uh, commonly used uh, f files from a Shopify theme. Uh, Index.liquid will be the, the homepage template. Theme.liquid is a, a layout file, and uh, if you're not familiar with layout files, we do have a whole bunch of tutorials and screencasts relating to those uh, on the Shopify partner blog, and we will put those uh, links uh, in the video show notes as well. You'll also notice that we can append the .liquid extension to both CSS and JavaScript files. Now, uh, obviously, when they are sent to the browser, they won't have the .liquid extension. Um, but what it allows us to do is pull in data from uh, the Shopify platform into these particular files, which can come in really, really handy. Um, and uh, yeah, you can use the same syntax, whether it be uh, you know output or logic within your uh, CSS and JavaScript files. And obviously what gets sent to the browser is the compiled final output 
of those. So uh, it's not just uh, templates, you can also use it in those asset files as well. I also wanted to show you just uh, what, what a typical template would look like. This is the Atom browser. This is my uh, preferred choice of text editor. You'll see that it's all syntax highlighted because I've installed the Liquid uh, highlighter package, which um, makes reading and working with your templates really, really easy and straightforward. Uh, you see it's a mixture of HTML. There's things like an H2 there. And it's got uh, some liquid in between those two. And uh, obviously at the time of rendering, if we had requested a product template for an active store, the, uh, the product title would get replaced there with the actual product's title as HTML. And we'll look at that shortly. You'll also notice on the left, that's a, a, a very, very typical layout of a Shopify theme, just a, a number of folders and a number of uh, templates and, and layouts and so forth. Very, very easy to get started. Um, you can obviously build on that as much as you want and have uh, numerous uh, multiple versions of a theme or as in a layout file or multiple versions of a product template that you can uh, programmatically request or uh, request uh, and apply to a particular product within the admin as well. But um, I just want to show you that, again, if you're new to Liquid, I don't believe it will really fox you. It's, it's really just working out the syntax and uh, then working with these small files to, to incorporate the, the Liquid code into your templates. So let's have a look at that syntax. Well, there are two main uh, delimiters that you'll notice whenever you're working with uh, liquid files. The, the double curly brace and the curly brace percentage. The first denotes output and the second one there, the curly brace percentage, uh, denotes logic. You'll also notice when you're familiar with uh, themes that the uh, all the objects, now an object is uh, another way of describing a variable such as uh, the shop variable. Um, this will have a whole bunch of properties associated with it, such as the name, the address of the shop, uh, the currency that the shop uh, functions in, and so forth. And we access those using the dot syntax. And again, this will uh, be demoed shortly. We also have things like loops available to us that allow us to iterate over objects. So let's say a particular product has uh, a bunch of uh, images associated with it. We don't uh, a, we don't know how many, and B, we certainly don't want to be uh, repeating ourselves in code. So loops allow us to access those uh, images, uh, just tell the template exactly how we want that HTML to be displayed, and then uh, not worry about how many there are. It will just do it for us. We also have filters that allow us to manipulate output. Uh, a great example is something such as a computer date will be stored in a particular computer syntax, if you will, in the database. A filter allows us to output that uh, in a particular format that we want, that we choose, uh, and not in that sort of computer uh, database format. Uh, we also have logic, which allows us to actually control the output flow. So, for example, uh, we can ask questions in our code. If, uh, if a product's available, do this. If it's sold out, do that. So it doesn't really um, influence what's displayed more uh, as in the actual output of the HTML. It more allows us to control which chunk of HTML is output or if a particular piece of code is shown at all. And again, this will become uh, apparent when we have a look. Uh, the final piece of the puzzle are operators. Operators allow us to compare things, whether that be a number or a, a string of text. Um, so we can say something like, if the price is greater than $100, we could output a particular piece of code. Uh, if it's less than $100, or if it's, um, I don't know, if it's uh, if it's something's on sale, or it has a particular tag, we can do X or we can do Y. So uh, again, I'll show you all of the operators towards the end of the presentation. So here's a very, very, f uh, well, if you've been working with uh, themes for any length of time, this will be a very, very familiar syntax to you. It's uh, We've got some logic in here. We're using a for loop, um, which we'll, we'll look at in more detail shortly. And you can see at the end there, I've uh, highlighted the logic uh, percentage curly brace with the, um, with the arrow pointing to it. Uh, we've also got a very familiar image uh, element there with the source. Um, but you'll notice that the source is populated by the double curly braces and what we're actually using there um, uh, uh, is the uh, the image iterator to, to, to output an image of a product. Um, we're also using a filter and uh, we're also closing out at the end there, the, which I've highlighted uh, with the arrow, the second arrow, uh, the double curly braces to show that we're closing off that particular output. Uh, and then we have the end for. So a very, very simple example, but uh, what, what actually happens as a result of this, if we're using that in a product template, is with those three lines of code, we have the ability to output every image that is associated 
with that particular product. And uh, you'll also notice again that we are we, we have no concept of a theme designer where that image needs to live um, using the image URL filter and filters will make more sense shortly. Uh, we we can uh, push that responsibility onto the Shopify platform and it will populate that URL for us. Okay, so let's have a look in more depth to clarify some of these concepts. Let's first begin by looking at output. Now, as I showed you when I showed um, the code editor, we had something very similar to this. It's an H2, double curly braces, product dot title, and then we've closed off those curly braces. Now, what's happening here, if this is on the product uh, template, uh, this will get replaced at runtime uh, when, when Shopify compiles that HTML template and sends it to the browser, uh, and it will be replaced by the title of the product that you've entered in the Shopify admin. So effectively, if we had an American Dynamug, what would get sent down to the browser in place of those uh, liquid constructs would be this American Dynamug. So just to go back one, the product.title will get replaced and sent to the browser with the name of the product. Obviously, you won't see any of that syntax once it's rendered in the browser. So that's output, really, really simple. It will grab a piece of data and it will take out the uh, liquid placeholders and it will inject the actual string of text. Very, very simple. Uh, it can get slightly more complicated because a lot of these objects have uh, different properties and we can uh, often we have to interrogate those with uh, with loops and things and we'll, we'll, we'll start to uh, examine what they are now. So objects and properties. An object really is uh, another way of describing a variable. Uh, it's a, a piece of data that has uh, information that we can access. But it's kind of like uh, if you think of um, a human being, we have this name of human, but then we have properties such as arms and legs and, and things like that. So uh, just as we have uh, the shop object, it has properties such as its title, its description, the currency that uh, the shop uh, functions in and so on and so forth. And as I said at the beginning, all these properties are accessed via the dot syntax. And if you look through the Shopify docs or indeed look at our Shopify uh, liquid cheat sheet, you'll see that all of these objects have a whole bunch of properties that you can access using this dot syntax. Um, before we had product.title, in this example it's shop.description. The shop is the object and the description is the property of that object. Um, we also have something in Liquid known as Liquid Collections. Now, whenever I do a workshop, I try and distinguish these from product collections. Um, if you think of a collection in Shopify terms, if you're entering a whole bunch of products into the admin and then you group them together logically, that's uh, what I term a product collection. In Liquid, a collection is a number of uh, objects that are all the same. So you could have a uh, collection of product images you could have um, a collection of users who you've got uh, as customers in the in the, the in the database effectively, and we have to deal with these in a slightly different way. So it's always worth thinking: is this uh, something that's uh, more about the the products on the front end, the collections that uh, your client or yourself has entered into the admin, or is it about a liquid collection? And if it's a collection, you'll need to iterate over it using a loop. So they are signified in Liquid by plural object names. And each individual item um, has its own properties. So we, we'll, this, again, will become clear by example in a moment. And as I said, liquid loops allow us to output these multiple items. And we don't have to have knowledge of each individual one. We just tell uh, the template how we would like these items to be output. Uh, but you can also target uh, individual items directly uh, if you need to using things such as dot first or dot last. Uh, more information on those can be found in the Shopify docs if you really want to dig deep. So how do we know when we're encountering a uh, liquid collection? Well, as I said there, it's all around the plurals. So if you've got uh, shop.types, or shop.metafields or shop.enabled payment types, you'll notice the S on the end of those, and that will means that we would need to use a liquid loop to access all of that data. Okay, let's have a look at loops. Well, we've already seen one in actual fact, and this was it. This is a, uh, a loop that allows us to output all of the images um, associated with a particular product. Now, a loop is uh, always started using the percentage curly, um, sorry, the curly brace percentage format, and uh, it begins with four. 
and you'll also notice that it ends with end for. So if you're familiar with any type of program, this will be a familiar construct. What we're saying here is for every image, and uh, the, the word image there is, is just, uh, it's kind of a placeholder, it's an iterator placeholder. It, it could actually be anything. Um, it doesn't have to be image, it's just a, a container word, but obviously image in this sense uh, feels feels appropriate, but um, it doesn't have to be, it could be, uh, could be anything, literally. So what we're asking here is for every image in the product.images collection, that's a liquid collection that houses every single product image associated with the current one we're viewing, we're going to output an image element and then we're going to uh, pass in that placeholder and then we're going to access um, the image URL and the medium version of it. Again, so we're using a filter to ask Shopify to fill in the blanks for us because, as I said at the beginning, this theme can be used in uh, across multiple stores uh, and we don't have any concept of where these files are resident on the platform so Shopify does all that grunt work for us which is great and then at the end there uh, we close it off with the uh, curly brace percentage and end for so let's say we had uh, 100 images associated with it this loop would run 100 times because we haven't uh, put any uh, reason for it to stop uh, if there were three, it would be three times. If there was one, and, uh, obviously one. And if there are no images, then a zero uh, image uh, elements would be output to the browser. So um, pretty straightforward. Hopefully, uh, you'll see you'll see these uh, as peppered throughout Shopify themes. Uh, loops are uh, very very. Um, used a uh, concept within themes uh, for outputting these collections so uh, again the key there is just to look for the s for the plural and then you'll know that you're dealing with a uh, liquid collection you need to use a for loop as i said there the iterator variable uh, image that i use can actually be anything um, it, it's not important what that is all you need to know and just going back a slide is that whatever you use um, after the for that's how you reference the currently uh, for want of a better phrase, the currently viewed image in the loop, the current image that you're looking at. So uh, it will have different properties for the first image, and it will have different properties for the for the 88th image in your loop, um, but you reference it using that uh, iterator variable there. As I said, it could, uh, could simply be for all the images, it could be your name, it could be whatever you want. It's just important that you understand that that's not uh, relating to anything other than the uh, sort of placeholder for the current uh, image in the loop. Uh, you'll also notice there that we uh, we reference the image in the source element there and we used a filter which is denoted by the pipe um, and we passed it through the image URL uh, filter which is a Shopify specific uh, liquid filter which will go off and grab the, the URL for that particular product image um, in the medium size. Every time you upload an image in the Shopify admin uh, multiple versions of that image are generated so that they can be uh, used in different uh, in different guises so if you want a very small thumbnail image you can use one uh, or you want a medium and uh, if you have a look in the Shopify docs all those image uh, sizes and proportions are referenced there but um, in this case we're just referencing the medium one which obviously have different URL to the big one and so forth and as I said uh, always uh, look for the closing end for Basically, what happens uh, when Shopify encounters this, it will carry on rendering the rest of the template. Uh, whether it's uh, looped around uh, one time, 10 times, 99 times, once it's completed, uh, iterating over all of those product images in the liquid collection, it will carry on and deal with the rest of the template. Okay, logic. Logic uh, will be, again, one of the concepts that uh, you'll use all the time during your liquid themes. Uh, so as I said at the beginning, it controls um, what is output, not exactly uh, the, the code itself, but whether a piece of code is displayed or not. It, uh, as I it doesn't output directly in a template. Uh, you're not going to see any output to the browser as a result of using logic. It uses uh, common constructs, some of which we've already seen, uh, but the ones that uh, mostly use are things like if and else and if then else and so forth. So let's have a look. In this one, you'll notice uh, that we're using an if statement, uh, which I always uh, describe as asking a question of our template. We've got the uh, curly bracket percentage, and we're basically saying if product.available, so the product object and available is a property, which will return true or false. So uh, fundamentally, if the product is available, and Shopify will tell us if it is or not, uh, if it is, we will uh, 
output the price in an H2, 99 pounds, 99 pence. Else we'll output uh, an H2 that says uh, sold out and then we'll end if at the bottom. So again, a really, really simple example. But as I said, the liquid uh, lo sort of logic itself isn't actually outputting anything in our template. Rather, it's uh, controlling which of those two uh, HTML uh, H2s is output depending on the answer to the question if product is available. Again, very, very quick example. There are variations on the if statement that you can use and uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, different formats that you can, can use to uh, con control the flow of the template. But, but essentially, just remember that logic is akin to asking a question of our template and uh, depending on the answer, depends on which piece of code is uh, sent down the wire to the browser. Now, filters, I think, are uh, an amazing feature of Liquid and, and, and often underused. There's, uh, th there's hundreds of them and you can do all sorts of uh, really interesting things with them. Um, but to put them sim you know, simple terms, it's a way of manipulating output data in some way. And uh, they allow our themes to, to be more agnostic, as we've already seen using that uh, image URL filter. We have no concept of where that image will reside on the Shopify platform, and nor do we need to. Uh, we simply use that filter and let Shopify do the hard, uh, heavy lifting for us and go off and find that URL. Uh, they also reduce the amount of code we need to write, um, which, uh, you know, as a, as a theme designer is great. If uh, I don't need to remember or particular formats, I can just throw in that filter and it will go off and grab that uh, URL or it will uh, you know, manipulate the data in a certain way so we don't have to. Very, very powerful. Let's have a look at one. So as I said at the beginning, the date format, uh, we publish uh, articles in, our, in the blog feature on the Shopify platform. And it's most likely that that date, I, I couldn't tell you exact format, but will be stored in a particular syntax within the Shopify database. We really don't want to output that. It's probably uh, doesn't make much sense to most people, but we can use a filter, in this case, the date filter to specify the format. And so we start on the left and we, we, uh, we, we push the, um, the article dot published underscore at uh, property there. We start on the left and then we filter it through the date filter itself. And the way I like to describe it is we start on the left, we uh, push it through the filter and it comes out on the other side on the right uh, in a different uh, format. Uh, filters, very, very powerful. That's a very, very simple example. Again, look up the Shopify docs and find the ones um, that, you, that you can use. Um, this is uh, one of the most popular ones. Uh, there's actually um, two here. We've got uh, the asset URL and the style sheet tag filters. And uh, this, this allows us again to, to really create agnostic themes. We don't know where our theme directory is. So we have a, a really useful filter called the asset URL, which will uh, give us a um, fully qualified path to the folder of our current store's active theme. Um, and then we also have the style sheet tag filter, which will then take the uh, fully qualified URL um, and append, which has already appended the style.css to it, and then it will create the full style sheet tag. Uh, so much so that I've been developing themes for so long that sometimes I actually have to look at how to uh, declare a style sheet uh, when I'm using something other than Shopify. So just to clarify, we, we're passing in as um, the first piece of output, the style.css, which is the name of our style sheet within our theme. We're then filtering it through the asset URL, which will create a fully qualified URL to that particular asset on the Shopify platform. Uh, just to note, it doesn't check for the existence of that file. It's assuming that you have put the right file name in. Uh, and then finally, we pipe all of that through the style sheet tag, which will take that and create a fully um, formed style sheet tag, which we can inject into our layout file. Finally, we come to operators. Operators allow us to compare um, variables, whether it be a, a piece of text, a string, or a number, or a price. And if you see, if we if we have a look at this code uh, example here, you see that um, I'm using a lot of the concepts that we've talked about already during this presentation. So we're starting off with some um, logic. Uh, we're using the if statement. If cart.itemCount, cart's our object, and the item count will return the number of items in our cart. Uh, that's the property. If it's greater than zero, then we're going to output a paragraph that says you have, and again, within this paragraph, we're using liquid output, and we're going to output the cart.item count. Um, and then we are using the pluralized filter 
uh, and, and saying um, which will basically allow us to if there's uh, we pass in the item count if it's one it'll be item if it's zero or more than one it will append uh, a plural as you can see so we're basically saying if it's one item if it's zero or more than one items and again you can find info on that particular filter in the Shopify docs uh, but again it does the heavy lifting so we don't have to it's a really really useful filter so basically it will say you have so many items in your cart um, if the uh, question that we asked at the top if the item count isn't greater than zero then we'll output a paragraph that says there's nothing in your cart why not have a look at our product range and we've uh, just got a, an anchor there that will direct uh, the user to slash products which gives an overview of all the products and uh, of course not forgetting the end if at the end so our comparison there is the is the uh, greater than sign at the top that's just one of many and here's a full list for you uh, we can compare something to be the same as equal to which uh, is the double equals comparison there we've got not equal to greater than less than uh, bigger or equal less or equal or which can come in very very handy uh, which is uh, this or that and must be this and also that and contains uh, you can uh, use the contains to look for a string within a string so for example we could say if the product title contains t-shirt then we could output uh, something within our particular template uh, again you can start uh, using these uh, for a whole bunch of things not least of which uh, is things like the cart example I showed on the previous slide okay uh, we've come to the end of the presentation I hope you found it useful um, we've covered quite a lot of ground um, but uh, it really was intended as an overview to give you an introduction to some of the key concepts of liquid there are hundreds of um, very very detailed documentation pages that go into all of the concept we've talked today you can also check out the Shopify partner blog at shopify.com slash partners slash blog where you'll find articles um, diving into many of these concepts in much more detail along with some screencasts as well things from uh, layout files and alternate template files to filters um, to, to a whole bunch of other stuff I'd also like to direct you to the liquid cheat sheet um, which is available on shopify.com slash partners slash shopify dash cheat dash sheet this is a kind of one-stop shop to all of those objects properties operators filters uh, that you can bookmark and um, have on hand during your shopify theme development uh, thank you for watching and i hope you found it useful